welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about functions, specifically what makes a relation a function. So to start with, we have a definition. A function is a special kind of relation where each input gives only one output. Now let's take in a few examples to see what that means. So here we are looking at some examples through tables. So we've got two tables and we need to determine if each one is a function or not a function and justify our answer. And remember, a function is a relation where every input has only one output. So if we're looking at the first table, we need to determine if each x has only one y. And for negative 4, 3 and 7, and 1 and 5, they each have only one output. But the problem is, when it gets down to 8, 8 has an output of 2, and 8 has an output of 3. And because 8 has two different outputs for one input, it is not a function. And we justify our answer by saying not every input has only one output. 8 has an output of 2 and an output of 3. Now looking at our next table, we can see that 2 has a 6, 4 goes with 7, 8 goes with negative 11, negative 1 goes with 7, and negative 2 goes with 4, and none of the outputs have more than one input. All the x's have only one y, so this is going to be a function, and we're going to justify our answer by saying that every input has only one output. Now let's take a look at an example with ordered pairs. So here we have some ordered pairs. We've got two sets of ordered pairs. We need to determine which one is a function, or if they're both functions, they're both not functions, and then justify our answers. So taking a look at our first ordered pair, we need to see that every x has only one y. So we've got negative 4, and it has only one y, which is 2. Negative 1 has only one y, which is 3. And 6 has only one y, which is 2. Now notice, there are two 2's in the y portion of these ordered pairs, but we don't care about the outputs. We only care that each input has one output. And since negative 4, negative 1, and 6 each have only one output, that makes this a function. And we justify our answer by saying that every input has only one output. Now looking at our second set of ordered pairs there, we've got negative 4 goes with 5, 5 goes with negative 3, so far so good, but then we have negative 4 again, and negative 4 now has an output of 2. So negative 4 has an output of 2, and negative 4 has an output of 5, which means they have different outputs for the same input. That makes this not a function. And we justify our answer by saying that not every input has only one output. Negative 4 has an output of 5 and 2. Now let's take a look at how this looks on a graph. Now here we have an example of graphs. We've got two graphs, again, same thing. Are we trying to figure out which one is a function, which one is not, and to justify our answer? It's a little more challenging on a graph. There's a couple of ways to do this. Option one is we can write down every single point and then determine does every one input have one output, just like we've been doing, or if we want to just leave it as a graph, since we know that we're only looking at x values, we're only looking at things along the x axis, as long as there's only one point at each place along the x-axis, then we know that we have a function. So we've got one point along negative 2. We've got one point along negative 1. We've got one point along positive 3, one point along positive 4, and one point along positive 5. So since we have only one point to each one of our x values, we can say that this is a function. And we can justify our answer by saying that every input has only one output. We did it a different way by drawing lines and noticing that every point has only one place on the x-axis, but that is the same thing. We could have written out each one of these points if we wanted to, but that would have taken longer than just drawing the lines. Now, look at, now taking a look at our second graph, we're going to do the same method. We're going to draw our lines along the x-axis again because we only care about the x's. And as long as we see only one point to each x, we know we've got ourselves a function. So we've got one point along negative 1. We've got, uh-oh, two points along positive 3. 
only one point along positive six. But those two points along positive three let us know that there's going to be two different outputs there, right? There will be an output that's going to be positive five and there's going to be an output which is negative four. So we could say that this is not a function. And we could justify that by saying that not every input has only one output. There are two points with an x value of three. Now that we've seen three different ways to represent functions, that brings us to the end of this set of notes. If you like this video, go ahead and throw us a thumbs up. If you love this video, go ahead and throw us a sub, and we will catch you in the next one. Go ahead.